My name is Alan Yu, a senior product manager working on native apps, and I'm super excited to talk to all of you about native apps and all the recent announcements that you've heard across Snowflake Summit. In today's agenda, I'm going to spend a little bit of time to walk you through what it's like to develop a native app, as well as what the consumer experience also looks like, and then also spend some time actually interviewing a, a customer, um, Nithin from VGS, who I'll invite on stage and ask a little bit about how he is using native apps. Um, and at the very end, I'll be actually asking uh, Umesh also to join us on stage for a Q&A session where if you have any questions about native apps, we'll spend some time to answer all those questions on stage. As you all know, native apps framework went public preview on Tuesday. And what this means is that all of you can start building native applications. And so what this means is that you can build, distribute, monetize, and deploy apps natively in the data cloud. And so this means that if you have these stored procedures or you have uh, UDFs or even streamlets, you can include those and package it inside of your native app. In addition to that, you can also leverage all the functionality that comes with the Snowflake Marketplace, where you can go and distribute um, through private listings and public listings and also monetize the apps that you go and build. And then finally, you can actually deploy these apps in consumer Snowflake accounts, and you retain full control of your intellectual property. And if you are excited about joining and building your own native app, you're not alone. There's many providers who have already started building native applications today. And these are many of the different scenarios of people who have actually already built native apps. This includes data clean rooms. This includes data curation and enrichment. This includes identity and transcoding scenarios. You'll hear a little bit from VGS is what they do today. You also have opportunities through advanced analytics, cost and governance, and then finally, connectors. And as you know from Snowflake, we have uh, first party connectors like the ServiceNow connector as well as a Google connector. And just super excited to see what kind of scenarios you all come, with, come up with and leverage the native apps framework. So let's kind of step, uh, step through what it's actually like to build a Snowflake native app. The very first thing is that you can build using your favorite tools and best practices. So for example, you can leverage VS Code and use a Snowflake VS Code extension. And right away, you can start building and uh, testing your stored procedures or UDFs, and then decide like this is something that I want to actually build my app from. And you, know, you can use Streamlit, you could use Snowpark, you could use leverage data sharing, as well as te telemetry capabilities, all from Snowflake. In addition to that, we also provide additional functionality to help you make this feel like a more native developer flow for you, where you can actually test and iterate on Snowflake functionality within the same account. And this also means that you can actually share apps with the same account for internal collaboration. So let's say you don't actually ever want to go to the marketplace. You can actually still build your native app for internal use cases and keep it um, all within your same organization. Next, as I was talking about, you can actually leverage the Snowflake marketplace once you've decided, and you, once you've thoroughly tested your native app, you can actually publish it on the Snowflake marketplace. And if you want to only make it available for certain customers in order to get some quick feedback, you can leverage private listings and share your native app just through a private listing. Or once you decided, you know, what, I'm ready to go, you can feature it on the marketplace, help, uh, you can search for it um, across all the other listings that we have in the marketplace. And uh, you can leverage both of those functionalities through native apps. Um, in addition to that, every time a new version is created, um, we are actually automatically running security scans. So you can be rest assured that any version that you choose to go distribute on the marketplace has been thoroughly security scanned and, rev and reviewed. Um, and in addition to that, in terms of monetization, you have, le you have full uh, access to any of the monetization capabilities we have in the marketplace. Um, so it allows you to have uh, exactly the billing model that you need for your application. And then finally, 
over the life cycle of the application, you'll be obviously having new features and new bug fixes based on all the customer feedback that you'll receive. And so we do have a versioning framework available through native apps where you can go and incrementally add different patches. And then once you decide like, hey, there's enough patches that we're just you know, making some minor fixes, I, now I'm adding bigger functionality, you can now uh, use our version framework to get customers upgraded to the new version. Um, in addition to that, you can also choose a subset of users that you can control through release directives and be like, hey, for this version, I want these certain customers to actually try this out. And then I'll go and set this as a default for everyone else so that they can leverage all the goodness that you included in your native app. And so in terms of this upgrade experience, it's all auto-upgraded, so it's seamless for customers. They will just wake up the next day and see their application automatically upgraded after they have installed it. And then you can also leverage the logging and tracing framework um, to troubleshoot your applications. And so now let's flip over to the consumer side. After you have already built this application, it's on the marketplace, anyone in the world can go and install it. Um, now let's think about what your customers will actually be experiencing. And so they will go to the marketplace and go discover a search for uh, whatever native app they need for their business case. And then in addition to that, when they click on the listing, they can actually review the security posture and monetization uh, models before purchasing. So they can see what account level privileges that they'll need in order to use the application. They'll be able to see what references will be requested by the provider. And this is all going to transparently be put on the listing before they even install the app. In addition to that, you know, customers will be able to leverage free trials where they can try out the app for a little bit before they go and decide that this is something I want to go purchase. So they'll be able to see all the UI that's included. They'll be able to see all the uh, store procedures, UDFs, and see if this, is this an application that I actually want to go purchase. And then you can, this has been emphasized quite a lot in the keynote, you can actually purchase apps using your Snowflake capacity commitment. So if you have a little bit of extra space there, you can actually use that to go purchase native apps and try them out. And then once you've clicked the Get button, you're ready to go, this is the right uh, purchasing model for me, um, you can install on your Snowflake account and keep it close to your data. And then once you've actually successfully installed the application, you can actually uh, see like, what privilege actions will be requested. You can see uh, uh, what references need to be set without ever leaving the application. So we had, we've added new UI, and we'll probably talk a lot, little bit about this soon, uh, where you can actually leverage this functionality. And then admins can obviously review and control all privileges granted to the app and remove those anytime too. So you have full flexibility, and you retain full control of data as it remains in your account. This is just a little video that we provided to show these are all real applications from providers who have already started building native apps today. So if you want to go and join and be one of these providers, um, go ahead and join us today. So next. OK, <laughs> cool. So. Now that I've talked about native apps, I'm actually going to invite Nitin Bose, uh, Nithin Bose from VGS, who is the VP of product. So a warm welcome for Nithin. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Alan. Yeah. So Nithin, um, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and what, uh, what do you do at VGS? Absolutely. Um, my name is Nithin. Been with uh, the company for about four years. But more importantly, at VGS, uh, we are the largest cloud-based tokenization provider. We've been uh, in business for the last eight years. We work heavily with financial institutions, banks, online retailers, merchants, to secure their most sensitive information, which tends to be either card, payments, bank account information, identity, could be a driver's license, social security number, all of those things across their apps. And that's been kind of our strong base. We've built our business, you know, we had 300 cu something customers, and you know, we secured about two billion pieces of data. Now, bringing that to the Snowflake world opens up a whole other set of possibilities. So really excited to be here. Great. So can you just tell us a little bit more about why native apps? Why did you, as VP of product, choose that native apps is why, what you want to bet your business on? Fantastic. I mean, first things uh, we've seen since Monday, the conversation around 
take the compute to where the data is versus moving the data over to where the compute is. So tokenization is no, no surprise, but also follows suit. At the heart of it, tokenization really is, how can I take the driver's license or a social number that's within the data set, it could be in a column, and instead of you having that information percolate into joins and when you create other subsequent derived tables, don't let that create a whole, let's say, sprawl of sensitive information across the board. Can you tokenize it? Tokenizing is slightly you know, more advanced than masking because you can join, you can also create enrichment, you can also create you know, data sharing capabilities. So that's the, that's the heart of it. Now, if you're thinking about tokenization, if you do so with the most sensitive bits, which tends to be identity for a customer or your partner, you don't want to take that out. And native apps as a concept really helped you know, bring the compute aspect, which is the whole security and the gobbledygook that happens underneath the covers, as you can imagine, the encryption, the key management, that's too complicated. What we were able to do with nat native applications is to abstract all of that complexity, throw a veneer of Streamlit on top, simplify it, and make it accessible. And the key message there was simplification. If you're able to make it easy for somebody to you know, you know, secure their warehouse, A, you're able to increase the reach of it because it's not daunting anymore, but more importantly, it gets done. And if you're a security practitioner, you're a compliant practitioner, you can rest assured that, hey, I have this thing set up. As soon as any new data comes in, I'm able to tokenize it. Downstream, my analysts can go nuts in deriving at all the information they need to do. They want to do ML, let them go at it. I'm not going to lose sleep if I'm a security practitioner because I've already set up all of the policies up front. That's the beauty of it. I mean, we've seen our customers come in and say, hey, we want to simplify our experience to onboard and analyze data. And today they have to go through root canal. To say, hey, I need to go a full audit review. I need to go check all of the policies. And you know, be, me being a data practitioner from my prior roles, I've had to do that myself. Not easy, it's a pain. So Snowflake and native apps for us makes it a whole lot easier. Got it. Thank you so much. Um, can you also tell us a little bit about how you're using external functions? Oh, yes. How you've been leveraging that? Fantastic. I mean, we've built our tech in the cloud, no surprise. You know, most, of it, most of it lives in AWS. Tokenization inevitably involves complicated algorithms. Much like machine learning, you need to run compute. Security algorithms, key rotation, also requires complicated compute. You can't necessarily put them into SQL or you know, native Python per se. And we were able to use external functions to leverage our SaaS investments that we've already made, as well as bring the abstraction of making it simple for somebody who's installing the app and using the app natively in Snowflake and marry both of these worlds. They don't need to now think about, oh my god, I need to get an API gateway going, I need to make a call out. That's all too complicated. Why do you want a data practitioner to do that? Keep it simple, give them constructs that they're familiar with. Everybody knows functions, store procedures, tasks, masking policies. If you can use that, it's great. So external functions we were able to use to kind of connect both of these worlds. And we're looking forward to actually you know, enhancing, enhancing it further. Great. And then if, one last thing, because there's a one very exciting feature that a lot of customers have been asking us about over the last couple of months, and it's this UI to help you with app configuration. Does, can you tell us why you're so excited about this new functionality? Yes, so the config aspect is actually super interesting for us. You know, how do you go set up all of the permissions that's needed? You know, Alan touched upon it briefly. How do you also make sure that you can administer directly using a constructs that don't necessarily make it complicated? Ideally, you'd want to minimize the amount of SQL commands you'd want to run to just get an app going, that is the most powerful thing that we saw in the config piece. We would love to come in. Everybody is using Marketplace and different apps. People are used to wizards. You would drop into SQL when you really need to, which absolutely we need to have, have the power to do so, so you can script and automate and all that cool stuff. But that shouldn't be the only way. And config, as you know, the whole approach of SDKs, the Python piece, the UI, gives the ability to make it a lot more, let's say, reachable, you know, it can distribute a lot easier. So I'm very, very excited about that, looking forward to use it. 
Thank you. And I guess just one last question for you. Go for it. What's next for you using the native apps framework? Can you just share a little bit of what you'll be working uh, on? Absolutely. And I'm talking to uh, Unmesh right before. Really, really excited about some smaller items around. We talked about config and, and uh, simplifying the UX, simplifying the, you know, you, the aspect of tokenization, detokenization. But the bigger thing that we're really excited about is can we keep all of the data that somebody's trying to tokenize within Snowflake entirely? And that's going to be possible with the, the rollout of Snowpack containers, which we are really excited about. And once that comes together, we can say you can tokenize everything, live in the Snowflake world, you can share within the, the Snowflake world, you can create a multi-party clean room system. All of those things become a whole lot more powerful uh, and easier. Um, so uh, we've seen customers ask us, even as of, as of Monday, somebody was asking me, hey, can you make this happen within? We're like, yeah, soon. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nathan. Appreciate it. So st stay with us for this one last portion for this theater session. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm going to actually invite Umesh Jagtap to the stage. And oh yeah. everyone, clap. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Um, and now we'll open up for Q&A for everyone here. I think we have someone who can speak to a microphone. Any questions? Hello. Hey. Um, we're thinking of building a native app soon. And what were some of your challenges, you know, and how you overcame them initially? I think the biggest piece has been the fact that we've had a strong partnership with Snowflake. Heavily invested, these two gentlemen, and there's a whole army behind them. One of them standing at the back, Tim. Hey. Um, that's been extremely powerful for us to bring this to life. And it's no longer a concept that you can, you know, put on a slide. This is real. Um, and there's been an extensive army that I, I can see come together to make this happen. So that's key in terms of resourcing. Documentation's getting up to date day in and day out. We got some new stuff that showed up today. Um, that's helpful, but more importantly, the constructs are not unfamiliar to you, right? The, snow, you know, the Snowflake constructs of the Snowflake primitives are the, still the building blocks. So you didn't have to go through a new learning experience of figure out, oh, oh my god, what the heck is all of this stuff. So it made it a whole lot easier. The bigger thing was how can you squish and figure out the right use case and the right uh, product that you would want to deliver, which tends to be in any product journey, the harder part. Sure. There's a question in the back. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question about deployment strategy. So, like, will we be able to do like a rolling rollout or like canary deployment? Um, so, you mean like being able to uh, deploy to a certain group of users, or correct? Yeah. Yes. So, you'll be able to leverage that um, using release directives. Um, you can choose like which version should go out to certain customers, and then once you decide like, okay, they've tested, they gave us feedback, fixed any bugs, you could then set the release directive for everyone else. So you can do this uh, rolling deployments, and on top of that, you can also leverage private listings. Also, if you want to just have certain customers to have access to the data, you can also leverage that too. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. OK. Hey, one more. <laughs> well, it's new, so please go to developers.snowflake.com. There's a ton of exciting content, quick start guides, GitHub samples that will get you started so that when you come back next year, you will have a ton of questions. Yep. Looking forward to seeing you on the Snowflake Marketplace. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.